Hello and welcome to this water cooling introduction video on the subject of fittings. There are an almost overwhelming amount of different fitting types and styles to choose from when it comes to water cooling. This video will offer a brief overview over all the major fitting types. One thing all the fittings have in common is their purpose. A fitting connects tubing in a water cooling system to a component, be it a CPU block, a radiator, a pump or any other component. There are three main types of fittings. The push-in fitting, the barbed fitting and the compression fitting. Push-in fittings are sometimes also called plug and cool. As the name suggests, the tube is simply pushed or plugged into the fitting. Now this might seem pretty insecure at first glance, but there's a fastening mechanism inside the fitting and it works pretty well. The tube can only be removed if the ring around the top of the fitting is pushed down. Push-in fittings do have a problem though, and the problem is with the tubing. First of all, you're limited to an outer diameter of no more than 10 mm. Secondly, only pretty stiff PUR tubing works with push-in fittings. It's because of the stiffness of PUR tubing that it's not very easy to route, and it has a tendency to kink. It's because of these limitations imposed by the tubing that push-in fittings aren't used very often anymore. Next up are the barbed fittings. In a sense, this is the simplest type of fitting, since the tubing is simply pushed over it and then held in place by friction and by the barbed structure of the fitting. Barbed fittings come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and some fasten tubes better than others. Generally though, any barbed fitting should only be used together with some type of clamp to secure the tube. There are metal clamps as well as plastic crocodile clamps to choose from. To secure the tubing, slip on a clamp before pushing the tube over the barbed fitting. Then slide the clamp down over the fitting and tighten it. Finally there are the compression fittings. The compression fittings cap nut is removed and slid over one end of the tube. The tube is then pushed onto a barbed fitting and firmly secured by tightening down the cap nut again. The advantage of compression fittings is clear. They have a very solid securing mechanism and it is more discreet and often better looking than hose clamps are. Compression fittings aren't completely carefree either. For one, the measurements of the compression fitting need to match the inner and outer diameter of your tubing exactly. With the huge collection of different tubing sizes available, it's easy to make a mistake here. And it doesn't take much for the tubing to fit almost, but not quite. Compression fittings for larger tubing sizes often cause another problem. These fittings can sometimes be too wide to be placed next to each other on a block. Often this problem can be solved by using 45 degree adapters. It's worth mentioning that similar problems can occur with thick tubing even when it's used with barbed fittings, especially if you want to add hose clamps. Now let's take a quick look at the lower half of the fittings. We will encounter three different threading sizes here. The small 1 8 of an inch, the all-purpose quarter inch thread and the big fat 3 8 of an inch. The quarter inch thread is basically the inofficial water cooling standard thread that you will find in almost all components and fittings. Only rarely will you encounter the smaller thread, mostly on older blocks, and also only rarely will you find a 3 8 of an inch thread. The larger thread does have the advantage that it can easily be made backwards compatible with an adapter though. What's the point in larger threads? Larger inner diameters. At this point I would like to say a few words about high flow, because larger threads are about larger diameters and larger diameters lead to higher flow rates. Higher flow rates in turn lead to small increases in cooling performance. In a fittings product description, the concept of high flow is comparable to the notion that any body spray will make its wearer instantly irresistible to everyone of the opposite sex. It's the marketing standard. As we have seen, there is a vast variety of different fittings to choose from. There are purely functional fittings next to visually more pleasing ones. Almost all of them will have something along the lines of special high flow design in their product description. But in reality, 
there isn't much a fitting can do to provide good flow rates. It can simply have an inner diameter as large as the threading size allows. Restriction caused in water blocks, radiators and tubes is far more relevant to flow rates than restriction caused in fittings. Ultimately, you can choose your fittings by the looks you prefer, regardless of what the product description might be wanting to tell you. In conclusion, here is a summary on the different fitting types. Push-in fittings are not recommended because of the problems with PUR tubing. Barbed fittings are a good choice and should always be used with some type of clamp. And compression fittings are practical and often good looking, but you need to make sure that they will fit next to each other on your components. Regardless of what fittings you use, it's always important to match them with tubing of the right size. Other than that, your personal taste can and should be the guide to what fittings you want to choose for yourself.